Welcome to the Help, I Have a Narcissist in My Life podcast. I'm Laurel Slade Wagoner. Episode 38, Equipping Your Children to Resist Narcissistic Bribery. As I articulated in prior episodes, thank you to all of you regular listeners. Thank you for listening and for also emailing me with your questions and sharing your hearts and stories. Your openness touches my heart deeply. Your pain is not unheard and it's not disregarded. Every single day, I lift each listener and email subscriber up in prayer to our Heavenly Father to strengthen and give hope to. You are not alone, even though it feels like it at times. If you're new to this podcast, welcome, and know that I am now praying for you as well. Moving on to today's topic, equipping your children to resist narcissistic bribery. Today's podcast information has been taken from my new book, soon to be released, Don't Let Their Crazy Make Your Kids Crazy, How to Equip Your Children to Recognize and Stand Up to a Narcissistic Parent's Control and Manipulation. Having one's children lavished with expensive gifts, trips, and baseless freedoms by their narcissistic other parent may not sound like control and manipulation, but it is. How so? Narcissists do not give for the sake of giving. They give for the sake of getting. A gift is a gesture or item freely given to another without expected compensation. When one is the recipient of a gift, his or her free will is respected and preserved. This is not the case, however, when the giver is narcissistic. When narcissists give, they do so with the intent of receiving something in return. Each gift from a narcissist is wrapped in indebtedness. Narcissistic parents give to their children and control the relationships they have with their children, restrict the relationships their children have with their non-narcissistic parents, and defile the non-narcissistic parents' image in their children's minds. Gifts given by narcissistic parents to their children are about getting something for themselves. And what they want for themselves is for their children to revere and prefer them over their other parent. If the narcissist do not receive what they are intending, there can be emotional punishment for the recipients of the gifts, the children, and sometimes for the non-narcissistic parents. Therefore, gifts from narcissistic parents are not gifts at all. They are bribes. A bribe is an item or freedom given to a person in order to influence him or her into doing what one wants them to do. Narcissistic bribery is an effective weapon of choice for many narcissistic parents. It is manipulation and can produce the following harmful impacts. Number one, little or no contact with one's children when the children are time sharing with a narcissistic parent due to all the fun activities they are being offered. Number two, the narcissistic parent is seen as the good or fun parent and the non-narcissistic parent is seen as the bad or restrictive and withholding parent in the children's minds. Number three, the narcissistic parent controls the non-narcissistic parent with his or her unilateral decisions regarding what to purchase for the children and or allow them to partake in. Number four, a preference for the narcissistic parent is created, which subsequently creates the potential for parental alienation syndrome. Number five, the children develop a disdain or inability to function within structure and limitations, which reinforces the preference for the narcissistic parent. Number six, the children become vulnerable to receiving negative consequences for resisting the bribes and refusing to placate the indebtedness the narcissistic parent has generated. And number seven, the non-narcissistic parent develops a chronic fear of losing his or her children to the narcissist and his or her children turning out to be narcissistic themselves. As you can see, the impacts of narcissistic bribery are destructive to the children as well as to the non-narcissistic parents. Narcissistic bribery erodes children's free will and has the potential to compromise their value systems. It isolates the children from their non-narcissistic parents and anyone who supports the non-narcissistic parents' values. The children are put in the position of having to choose between their parents, which is a completely unfair and tormenting position for a child of any age, even adult children. I imagine this information is anxiety invoking for some listeners. And for other listeners, it may be freeing as it puts to words what they are 
feeling and what their children are experiencing. Whatever your experience may be, precious listener, take a deep breath and take heart because as 1 John 4.4 articulates, the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. The following is an approach that has the potential to effectively neutralize the influence of the narcissistic bribery your children are receiving from their narcissistic parent. Step 1. Pray and take perspective. Pray and ask God to reveal His mighty power and His promises. His power is real and His promises are true. Do not lose sight of this power for certainty. What God has to offer is so much better than what your children's narcissistic parent has to offer. It may take your children some time to reach this conclusion. However, I firmly believe each one of us is created with a longing that only a relationship with our Lord and Savior can satisfy. Your children will come to understand this reality, either in the present or in the future. Proverbs 22.6 promises so. Start children off on the way they should go, and even when they are old, they will not turn from it. Perspective brings forth peace. Keep in mind this perspective metaphor to help anchor yourselves in God's power and His promises. When is a bird bigger than a mountain? when the bird is right in front of you and the mountain is a mile away. Perspective matters. Step two, resist discussing the issue with their narcissistic parent. Your children's narcissistic parent will not modify his or her behavior and may even escalate the bribery because he or she knows it upsets you and creates the preference from the children he or she is seeking. If the circumstance warrants legal intervention, report suspected parental alienation syndrome to your legal counsel. Step three, use anti-challenging language with your children. This is key. If you outwardly tell your children their narcissistic parent is in the wrong, is immoral, irresponsible, or crazy, they may become defensive with you. Validate your children's perspective, keeping in mind that validation is not agreement. Step four, ask questions and invite your children to problem solve with you. The goal is to glean a more accurate perspective of circumstances and the value system your children are forming so you can help them problem solve through their challenges. It is crucial to understand what is going on in their little hearts and minds. Where there is knowledge, there can be influence. Step five, Educate and incentivize your children for making godly or value-centered choices regardless of their location or whom they are with. Incentives are not bribes. Bribery creates indebtedness, and there may be negative consequences if the debt is not placated. Conversely, an incentive is a reward which is legitimately earned without fear of negative consequences. The participant in the incentive program is not punished for saying no to the incentive. They simply miss out on the reward. Bribes take away free will. Incentives promote free will. There is a huge difference. The following examples may help to clarify the aforementioned approach in action. Example one, two girls ages four and six time shared for three nights at their narcissistic father's house. Upon returning to their mother's house at dinner time, the girls enter their mother's house holding near empty Starbucks Frappuccino cups. When hugged and asked what they did at their dad's that was fun, the girls were very excited to share that they really enjoyed staying up way past double digits and not having to bathe or brush their teeth before bed when they were at daddy's house. Although the non-narcissistic mother may feel like screaming obscenities at the girl's narcissistic father for his irresponsible parenting, she decides to take a few deep breaths, pray for self-control, and remind herself that everything is possible for one who believes. Mark 9.23 She resists bringing these issues up to the girl's father. He would not modify his behavior, and she knows it. She delays talking about her concerns with the girls to a later time when the girls are less caffeinated and more settled. She knows transition time is not an effective time for rebuking or teaching. The mother discusses her concerns with her daughters, one by one, over the course of the next two days, and educates the girls on her value regarding each issue. 
When talking with the girls about her concerns, the mother discusses only one issue at a time to prevent overwhelming them. So, with regard to getting enough sleep, the mother shows the girls sleep charts and the recommended number of sleep hours per night for each of their ages. Concerning the frappuccinos and timing of drinking them, she pulls up information regarding caffeine intake for youngsters and the detriment of eating treats before dinner. Pertaining to bathing and teeth brushing, she shows the girls information on the benefits of washing dirt and germs away every day, as well as cavity prevention. The mother enters into each of these discussions with a question to the girls. She's seeking to understand. What do you think about how to stay healthy with regard to blank? This reveals the girls' values and invites them to problem solve for solutions they can use no matter whom they are with or what environment they are in. And lastly, the mother incents the girls with a self-care incentive chart. Every day, whether they are at her house or their dad's house, their grandparents' house, or even friend's house, both girls can earn a sticker for each healthy choice on the chart. At the end of the week, whomever earned the predetermined number of stickers can pick a prize from a treasure box the mother filled for them. Example 2. A 15-year-old girl timeshares equally between her narcissistic mother's house and her Christ-loving, non-narcissistic father's house. When her mother married the girl's stepdad six months ago, the daughter did not want to timeshare at her mother's house at all. The narcissistic mother then began showering her daughter with monetary gifts and freedoms in an effort to change the daughter's perception of her, her new husband, and life at her house. Over time, the daughter began not only accepting time sharing at her mother's house, she also began enjoying her time there due to the lavishing she was experiencing. When the daughter returned to her father's house this past Sunday evening, the daughter reported having a fabulous week with her mother and stepdad. She shared that they gave her a credit card with her name on it and told her she could use it to buy whatever she wanted, just making sure she didn't spend more than $500 a month. She went on to say that her mother allowed her to set up her own Amazon account and she had a ton of fun shopping with the new cart. She also reported they visited the Jeep dealership to look at cars and that her mom and stepdad will be purchasing a new Jeep for her on her 16th birthday next month. The father felt completely overwhelmed and railroaded by the girl's mother and her nonsensical unilateral decision making and narcissistic bribery. He wanted to tell his daughter, her mother and stepdad are crazy, irresponsible, and selfish, and there's no way he's allowing her to keep the credit card, have her own unmonitored Amazon account, or get a Jeep. But instead, the father took a few deep breaths and responded, that's quite a week you've had. I can tell you're really excited. I'd love to hear more about all of this. How about we continue to discuss each of these in more detail over the next couple days? The daughter agreed. He prayed and prayed and asked God for his wisdom and discernment. He reminded himself that God loves his daughter even more than he does and wants her to be spiritually, emotionally, physically, and relationally safe. He checked the decreed parenting plan to see if there was anything outlined which prohibits any of his ex-wife's choices. Unfortunately, there was not, so he had no legal recourse. Since the parenting plan provided no legal mitigation with regard to the credit card, Amazon account, or car, he decided to use these circumstances as te teaching opportunities. He knew attempting to co-parent with his daughter's narcissistic mother would only exacerbate the bribery, so he chose to problem solve where he has the most empowerment in the relationship he has with his daughter. The next day, the father sat his daughter down and explained he did some research and wanted to share some findings with her. He discussed each issue in separate conversations over the next few days so as not to exasperate her. With regard to the car, he asked her thoughts on how to stay safe while driving. He listened to her thoughts and discussed a six-week defensive driving course he would be requiring her to complete prior to being able to use the vehicle when she was at his house. He stated he trusted her, but didn't trust other drivers. She needed to learn strategies to keep herself safe in the presence of adverse conditions and others' reckless driving. He humbly shared that he loved her too much not to invest in her this way. He went on to explain the defensive driving coach suggested a different type of car for her as a first car instead of a Jeep. The driving coach recommended a Toyota 
RAV4 or a Honda Accord. Both of these cars have many more safety features than does a Jeep, which will allow her to feel at ease when she's getting used to driving. The father offered to take her to different dealerships so she could see the cars and hear all about their safety features. If she liked one of those, he would be willing to split the cost with his mother, with her mother. He explained the monetary part was for him to work out with her mother. Her part was letting her mother know she was no longer interested in a Jeep and desired something easier and safer to drive. With regard to the credit card and Amazon account, the father explained that she would be on her own soon and he would like to teach her about personal finance. He purchased the Dave Ramsey personal finance class for teens and offered to spend time completing the material with her. The father further explained that as he saw her investing in herself and in her future, he would invest in her also. He would be willing to match every dollar she saved so she would have a substantial savings account by the time she went to college. The father knew the most effective way to protect his daughter was through prayer and educating her. This approach works. I've seen the previously mentioned process neutralize narcissistic bribery time and time again, both professionally and personally with my two boys. I would often tell my boys as they were growing up, God gave me a wonderful assignment the day they were born. I have been instructed by God to teach, train, and equip you for life as a contributing member of society and the body of Christ, as articulated in Proverbs 22.6. I share wisdom with you because I love you. I love God, and I want to do what he instructs. I shared that they could choose to be mad at me and refuse to internalize my instruction or believe I was speaking and deciding out of deep love for them. The choice was theirs. However, I would be continuing to instruct them because I deeply desired for them to have a good life and personally sought to be obedient to God. I further explained throughout their lives, they will be tempted to do things which may seem exciting or fun in the short term, but choosing what is wise and prudent over what appears thrilling will bring them deeper and longer lasting joy in the long run. I could not control whether or not they would be tempted. However, I could teach them wise and prudent alternatives to whatever someone else was offering them, even if that someone was their narcissistic father. You cannot stop your children's narcissistic parent from using narcissistic bribery, yet you can neutralize the influence. Nothing he or she has to offer is better than what God has to offer. Believe it and teach it. God will not let you down. He promises so. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Galatians 6, 9 Healing activity for today. On an index card, write the following. On side one, write the aforementioned process for neutralizing the impacts of narcissistic bribery. The process is as follows. One, pray and take perspective. Number two, resist discussing the issue with their narcissistic parent. Number three, use anti-challenging language with your children. Number four, ask questions and invite your children to problem solve with you. And number five, educate and incentivize your children for making godly or value-centered choices regardless of their location or whom they are with. And then on side two, put Proverbs 22.6. Start children off in the way they should go, and even when they are old, they will not turn from it. Some power scriptures to keep in mind. Start children off on the way they should go, and even when they are old, they will not turn from it. Proverbs 22, 6. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Galatians 6, 9. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Isaiah 55:11 For I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you hope and a future Jeremiah 29:11 All your children will be taught by the Lord and great will be their peace in righteousness you will be established tyranny will be far from you you will have nothing to fear Isaiah 54 13 through 14 As always, I'd like to end with a prayer for all you listeners. 
Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you for all that you are and all that you do for me and for the listeners and for their children as well, Father. Only you know what the listeners' children are tempted by now and what they will be tempted by in the future. I just ask that you protect the listeners' children from the evil enemy of their souls and from the destructive impacts of the narcissistic bribery they are receiving from their narcissistic parents. Please help the listeners' children to desire what is pleasing to you, Lord, and help them to make value-centered choices that reflect your values and what you desire for each of them. Please give the listeners your wisdom and your words to say when they are instructing their children, Father. Surround them with others who love you, others who love like you and can lead them into the life that you desire, this side of heaven, Lord, and in eternity. Amen. Please make sure to subscribe to this podcast and leave a quick rating and review on Apple Podcasts. The ratings and reviews are so important as they allow others exposure to this information so that they can experience hope and help against the narcissistic control and abuse in their lives. I want to personally say thank you to all of you who have taken the time to subscribe and or rate the podcast. It helps me tremendously with writing future podcasts and books. You can email me directly at lslade4 at verizon.net. That's L-S-L-A-D-E, the number four, at verizon.net with your questions or topics that you would like addressed in the upcoming podcast. As I stated in the introductory podcast, this podcast series is for you listeners, and I want to address the issues that you need addressed. I will incorporate your questions as well as information from my book, Don't Let Their Crazy Make You Crazy, into my upcoming podcast. If you have any questions about me or my services or would like more information on the book, Don't Let the Crazy Make You Crazy, How to Stay Sane and Strong When the Narcissist in Your Life is Trying to Control or Abuse You, please visit my website, slade-wagonercounselingservices.com. You can purchase the book in either paperback or ebook format on the website as well. And oh, on the website, you can also subscribe to be part of my email community to receive updates on future podcasts and books, as well as a free monthly tool that you may find helpful to stay sane and strong as well. Thank you for listening and God bless.